See, I changed it. I couldn't put, I didn't, I didn't have enough letters to put September, so it says autumn. That way I don't have to change it for a while. It's not even autumn yet, but who cares? It's autumn in my heart. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. I'm Mooney, and today I want to talk to you about something very interesting that happened thanks to this channel. Um, let's start back from the beginning. <laughs> um, I suffer from something called thalassophobia. It's written down here and that is just a fancy word for saying I'm really, really, really scared of fish. Not just fish, but most sea life in general. Uh, it, anything that is fish like so for example i know whales are not fish but because they swim also whales are actually my biggest fear but because they swim um in in a similar manner to fish then i'm scared of them but i'm i'm not scared for example of lobsters or crabs or octopuses clearly but i am really really terrified and when i say terrified i mean there was this one time i was writing an article when i used to write articles for money that was a long time ago um and there was a storm coming and there was a cloud that i thought was shaped like a dolphin and i started crying that's the level of my thalassophobia or that used to be the level of my thalassophobia i have worked with many different doctors throughout my life in order to get myself to a place where I can go into a restaurant that has a aquarium and I am not completely terrified. And if I do go into a restaurant that has an aquarium, it's really bad. Um, it, it's, it, I couldn't look at pictures of fish in magazines or online. If a fish appeared on television, I would like, cover my eyes and just start shaking i have woken up screaming from nightmares where the only thing that is happening is that i'm on my boat and i know that there's a fish beneath me in fact just saying that is giving me kind of the creeps but here's something interesting that happened through my um experience on booktube my telosophobia has gotten so much better to the point where the other day I faced one of my biggest fears, which was to look at a shark whale, not in person. I don't think we're there yet. I can't even go to aquariums yet, but I had never been able to look at a shark, a whale shark. I think it's called whale shark. I'll insert a picture here for you to know what it is. And I was not scared. In fact, I enjoyed the process of looking at that picture. And there is one, not one book, but there are a couple of books here that have helped me get there. And I want to talk to you about it. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that if you have a phobia, reading about your phobia is going to make it better. And my phobia is very kind of concrete. And the fact that I love animals and yet I have a phobia of animals plays into this whole thing. But I just think it's so like the power of words the power of stories has helped me get to a place where i faced one of my biggest fears and it was okay and in part it's thanks to this book the soul of an octopus this book started me on a healing journey from my thalassophobia in a way that i never expected I, of course, picked up this book because it was about octopuses and I'm not scared of octopuses. But what really got me was not the part about octopuses, but the part about eels. This book taught me that eels dream. And that, I had never considered that before. And that made me feel like I'm getting kind of emotional because that kind of made me see fish in a new light in a gentle light in a in a in a in a way where i wasn't scared anymore it was like they dream too they're not they're just swimming without any purpose or anything they have dreams and maybe hopes and maybe 
you know, I kept thinking, I kept asking my friends, what is the eel dreaming about? And all of them kept saying, it's probably dreaming about eating. But what if it's not? It's been proven that cats and dogs dream about our owners. So, our owners, their owners. So what if the eel is dreaming about a good day in the ocean? What if it's dreaming about beautiful blue water? And that humanized fish for me. In fact, this entire book made me feel like fish are not necessarily these mindless beasts. I knew there weren't mindless beasts, but hearing it firsthand from somebody that has spent so much time with fish and, and just hearing about fish in general just made me feel like I didn't need to be afraid. Of course, it didn't cure me, but it opened a door that I that nothing else in my life had ever opened. And I appreciate this book so much for that. Of course, I love octopuses, but I always loved octopuses. But suddenly, I found myself thinking, maybe fish aren't that scary. And that brings us to the next book that I read that has really helped me. Spying on Whales, The Past, Present, and Future of Earth's Most Awesome Creatures by Nick Pison. Whales were my biggest fear. Again, I couldn't look at this picture a year ago and not start sobbing because I was so scared. But I got the Kindle edition of this book and I learned about whales and about, you know, their story, their, their, their evolutionary story, how they came to be, why they're so big, the way people study them, how they evolved and again it brought them from this abstract concept of fear to a place of understanding and I just I can't believe that a book could do that for me like after this I remember I went online and I said I'm gonna look for just one video of whales swimming and I fell in love with that particular video. There are others that I can't watch. And again, there are some that I can't watch still. But because this book brought them down or brought them out of the sea for me to see them as something other than this alien creature, mammal-like, but that swims and that lives in the depths of the ocean. And made them more like me and you i saw a video and i was like wow look at that i know what that is i know where they evolved from and it was great it was a wonderful experience and i think these two books show the power that nonfiction and literature in general can have over anyone so I just felt like sharing these two like experiences with you and I also wanted to show you two books that I'm in the middle of currently that I wouldn't have thought I would ever ever in my life read. The first one is What a Fish Knows, The Inner Lives of Our Underwater Cousins. This one, mm, oh wow, this one, it's just we know so little about fish. In fact, it wasn't until recently that we even accepted that fish feel pain. I just, I can't with that, <laughs> but look at that fish. I'm looking at it, I'm touching it, and I'm not afraid. And I've worked with, sci with, with psychologists and psychiatrists all my life to get rid of my thalassophobia. And it turns out that all I needed was to read about them, to learn about them, and I just, I guess what I'm saying is nonfiction is powerful. Again, I'm not saying that it will cure you of your fears, but this is how powerful this has been for me. And well, the other book I want to read is Other Minds, The Octopus and the Evolutions of Intelligent Life. Now, this one is a little bit, you know, kind of outside of all of this because I'm not scared of octopuses and I'm, uh, and this is more about octopuses. But just like Simon Montgomery surprised me with her book, I think this might surprise me with learning more about just 
see life in general and bringing it to a place where I'm not scared of it. And maybe one day I'll go to an aquarium and I'll have all this fish knowledge to tell people. And I think this is the true power of nonfiction literature. Not making people not scared of things, but educating people. And this is why I always say that fiction is not education. Nonfiction is education. I mean, I have read plenty of books with fish in them, but I have never read nonfiction that brings fish to another level for me where I can actually read about them, look at pictures of them, and then maybe one day my goal is to go to an aquarium and just enjoy it. And that is the power of words. And I wanted to share that with you today. There's really nothing else to this video except to say books are powerful, words are powerful, and this is why reading is so important. This is why broadening your genre reading or whatever is so important. This is why nonfiction matters and why we should be reading more of it. Because it really does bring things to light, to a new light. I think fiction is so important, but I think nonfiction has this thing of this is real. It's like recently I read The Five by Ruby, um, not Ruby, <laughs> Holly, Haley Rubenhold, there we go. And um, it brought so much humanness, like it brought abstract concepts of people into realities. And I just, I don't know, I felt like sharing my love of nonfiction with you today and telling you my story about how these books have helped me cope with my thalassophobia. And maybe next year, I'll go to a, an aquarium and I will have these people, these authors, these books to thank for that. And well, I, that's it for today's video. It's really just a simple little video of me telling you my experiences with thalassophobia and nonfiction reading. And I hope you enjoyed it. And well, without any further ado, I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays and that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.